Can't have events, all of the chaos makes perfect sense When you're spinning round, things come undone Welcome to Earth, third rock from the sun The cause and effect checklist. I designed this back in 1968, <laughs> two years after entering the sport of golf. I'm very proud of this old checklist, although it never served <laughs> its intended purpose. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about how this I came into being and in the spring of 66 a friend of mine he knocked on the door and hey Paul come on we're going to celebrate Earl's birthday over at the golf course would you would you come along with us I said well I, I never played golf I don't know nothing about that damn game about that game Oh, we're just going to have fun, Paul. Please come along. Well, okay. So off to the course we go, and yours truly fell in love with the game of golf. Well, ironically, I shot a 45 my first round. A lot of people didn't believe that was my first round of golf, and others, they call me a ringer. <laughs> A ring. Oh well. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, by 1968, I'm still shooting 45 or 90. I'm playing average golf, and no matter what I do or how I try to do it, or I'm stuck. <laughs> Obstacles and sticking points. You know about them. I know you do. So I started out during that two years I had read a host of different books and magazines and even took a few hands-on lessons from the pros. And these are just some of the so-called faults that can enter into a golf swing and causing a, a variety of different problems depending <laughs> on how they're commingled, I guess you might say. Well, anyway, I started thinking, well, if I'm ever going to maybe advance my game on up the ladder of success, well, it would require a little better organization to try to get all these <laughs> faults in some kind of an organized manner so that I could better understand them and how they would impact, for example, the effects or the results such as slicing, pulling, hooking, pushing, topping, shanking, loss of length. Shots too high, shots too low, inconsistent shot making and bad putting. <laughs> so now we have the cause and effect checklist. So, I'm starting to think, well, this is a pretty good idea. For example, on slicing, there's, there's 10 different possible causes, and obviously listed here, and 2, 3, 5, 10, 13. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, if I took a little time, maybe a week, two weeks, month, you know, I could systematically sort through these possible causing and eventually would lead me to determine why I was slicing the ball which is typically the number one problem with average cough. So nevertheless I started liking what I had here, liking the idea and I raced it off to the printer thinking well maybe if this helped me it would help other people as well and they printed it up and shortly after getting it back I noticed down here that I had misspelled fat shots taking a divot you know and I spelt it fat shoes well I would bet you 
that if you have fat shoes, <laughs> you probably got quite a few swing balls. <laughs> I hope you don't have fat shoes, <laughs> okay? So anyway, I'm thinking, well, okay, if I eliminate, if I check out 2, 3, 5, 10, 13, 14, and on, there's 10 different possible causes here. And I go through them one at a time, I should be able to eliminate my problem with slicing. And then it sort of dawned on me, man, I got a big problem here. What happens if my problem lies somewhere within a fractional form of these causes? For example, maybe my problem is one half of number two, one third of number three. Let's say none of number five, none of ten, but say, well, one part of fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> and 1% of 15 and so on. I think you got the drip. Fractional parts of these instead of a whole part. <laughs> oh boy. And looking at it a little closer, I'm saying to myself, well what happens, I've got 10 different possible causes here. What happens if it's one-tenth of each one of these? <laughs> Whoa. Well, that means in order to cure my slicing, there is potentially a combination of 10 to the 10th power. Whoa. 10 to the 10th power. Well, let's see now. If I add all this up, and I think I got like 125 on here, and if you did the math, you know, if you crunch the numbers and squares and the exponents and say you romanced Einstein's MC squared, <laughs> you might possibly have 126 to the 126th power. Whoa! Wow, I don't think they cause an effect checklist work too well for its intended purpose but now we have the unexpected result that being that this beautiful list here shows you that it's absolutely literally and factually impossible to improve your golf swing by trying to sort through and identify an array of swing faults and thus eliminate them out of your swing one at a time. Now my friend, <laughs> if you still want to try that, well, I'll see you in a couple thousand years. The cause and effect checklist should prove to you beyond re reasonable doubt, all doubt, that trying to improve your golf swing through the use of this strategy, well you'd be standing on the tee for quite a while and it probably cost you a lot of dough. <laughs> In our lessons, as we keep moving along, Slowly but surely, I hope I'm twinking the perceptions in your mind's eye that will allow you for yourself to determine that you need to take a second look at the way that you're going about swing improvement. And when you make up your mind to that, you will get onto the right pathway of learning and you will move your game up the ladder of success for two reasons. That's who you are. And the second reason is you'll be on a prerequisite pathway that's proven to get you there. The pioneers of golf, ladies and gentlemen, intended this game to be fun. Yet, if you go off to the driving range, one of the 
few things that you do see over there are golfers smiling. They're frustrated. They work hard. They do everything they can to try to sort through and identify their problems or incorporate new movements into their swing. And when it's all said and done, non-repeatable swing. To a point sometimes where it can be some so complexing, so confusing, that it's quite easy after a while to just almost say, well, you know, I just really don't, apparently I don't understand it, or I just don't have the physical abilities to pull off a good repeatable swing. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you, you do have those physical abilities, and it's not that hard to do. One of the top golfers in the world sets right up at the pinnacle of golf. He said that people tend to make things that are really simple much more complicated than they really are. And he's dead on the money when it comes to learning a repeatable golf swing. Once your thoughts are running in the right direction, no big deal. You know, they say that success is the progressive realization of a worthy idea. And I hope with each video I put out here, you'll be getting just a little bit closer to tweaking your perceptions. And when you pull that off, you're on your way to a good golf swing. And I believe myself personally, you are unstoppable because that's what we do. Thank you for joining in. I hope the old cause and effect checklist helped you just a little bit. But no matter what your choices might be, just always pick up your golf club, ladies and gentlemen, and keep on swinging without fat shoes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, first fundamental golf. No fat shoes allowed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no fat shoes allowed. <laughs> what a dumbie.